Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to solve for the current and the voltage in an RL circuit. We're going to solve for the voltage as a function of time across the inductor, and we're going to solve for the current to the circuit. Here's our input voltage from the source, 20 times the sine of 10t plus 30 degrees. Notice in this case the source voltage is in terms of the sine, not the cosine. So since we traditionally work everything with the cosine, we may want to change that into a cosine function. So when we go from the sine to the cosine, what we do here is we change the sine and we add 90 degrees or we subtract 180 degrees and then get rid of the negative sign, which is exactly what we did here. So the function, the source voltage, can now be expressed as 20 times the cosine of 10t minus 60 degrees, cosine instead of sine. The maximum voltage is still 20 volts. The omega, the, the angle of frequency, is equal to 10 radians per second. And the phase angle, well now in this case, the phase angle is going to be a minus 60 degrees because we converted it to a cosine function instead of a, fu a sine function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the source voltage and convert it into the frequency domain. Now that we have it as a cosine function, we can now say that V is equal to the magnitude 20 times the phase angle of minus 60 degrees then we realize that the current I is going to be equal to V divided by the impedance, which means we now also have to find an expression for the impedance in the circuit. So the impedance Z is going to be equal to R plus J times omega L. So in this case, we have plus J omega L because we're dealing with an inductor. Omega L is the inductive reactance. So let's plug those values in and see what we get. For the resistance, we have 4 ohms plus J times omega, what's 10, and L, the inductance, is 0 0.2, which means that we have 4 plus 2J as the impedance. Actually, we like to write J in front of the 2, so we'll write as J times 2. Now, we want to write that as a magnitude and a phase angle to get Z into this format right here, which means that the magnitude of z, the magnitude of z is equal to the square root of r squared plus x squared. So in this case, that would be the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to the square root of 20. The square root of 20 is 4.47. So that would be 4.47. And the phase angle would be equal to the inverse tangent of x over r. In this case, that would be the inverse tangent of x. In this case, is 2, a positive 2. r is 4. So we're looking for the inverse tangent of 0 0.5. 0 0.5 inverse tangent is 26.57. So that would be positive 26.57 degrees. This means that the impedance here, z, can be written in terms of the, the amplitude which is 4.47 and a phase angle of 26.57 degrees. So now we're ready to calculate the current in the frequency domain because it's V over Z. So I is equal to the voltage 20 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees divided by the impedance which is 4.47 with a phase angle of 26.57 degrees that will be subtracted now from the minus 60, so this becomes equal to 4.47 equals 4.47. Wow, well, that makes sense. Wow, just to think about it, because the square of 4.47 is 20, so that would be 4.47 with a phase angle of minus 60 minus 26, that would be minus 86.57 degrees. So now we have the current which means that we can now express the current in the time domain, i is a function of time through the whole circuit, which would be equal to the amplitude of 4.47 times the cosine of omega t, which is 10 times t, and the phase angle is minus 86.57 degrees. Since we had the source voltage in terms of the sine, we may want to reconvert this to the sine. So that means that we're going to put a negative in front of that and add 90 degrees to go from the cosine back to the sine. Well, actually, 
that's not quite correct because let's see here. Uh, we would subtract 90 degrees. So to, yeah, from the cosine to the sine, we go, we put a negative in front, minus 90 degrees, but then we get rid of the negative by adding 180 degrees to that. So in essence, to go from the cosine to the sine, we just add 90 degrees to this. So this becomes equal to 4.47 times the sine of 10t, that will be plus, uh, let's see here, 3.43 degrees. So this here is the current as a function of time, and that will be in terms of amps. Now we need the voltage as a function of time. Let's see here, the voltage, and that would be the voltage across the inductor, so we're going to have to use a voltage divider. So the voltage across the inductor is equal to the voltage across the circuit, the voltage of the source, so maybe we'll put sub s there for the source voltage, times the ratio of the reactance across the inductor, because that's, you know, that's the impedance across the inductor, divided by the impedance across the whole circuit. Since we have all that, we can say that this is equal to the source voltage, which is 20, with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees. We multiply it times x sub l. Now x sub l, let's see here. X sub L is equal to omega times L, which is equal to, let's see, omega, which is 10, and L, which is 0 0.2, which is equal to 2. That's a magnitude of 2. And the phase angle, since, um, let's see here, the current leads the voltage, X sub L will be a plus 90 degrees. So phase angle of 90 degrees and then we divide the whole thing by the impedance, which we got over here, which is 4.47, and an angle of 26.57 degrees. Let's see here. So we have 40 divided by 4.47, that gives us 8.95, 8.95, and a phase angle of that would be plus 30 minus 26.57. That would be phase angle of 3.43 degrees. And then if we want to convert that into the time domain, notice that will be in terms of the cosine, which means that the voltage as a function of time will be equal to the amplitude of 8.95 volts times the cosine of 10t, omega t, and then the phase angle is plus 3.43 degrees, plus 3.43 degrees, and that would be in terms of volts. But now, since we started with the source voltage in terms of the sine, let's reconvert that. So we can say that the voltage as a function of time is equal to 8.95 times the sine of 10t plus, all we have to do is add 90 degrees, so we get 93.43 degrees, decimal place right there, okay, and that's of course also in volts, and this would be probably the best answer since we started with the full source voltage in terms of the sign. Again, notice that the difference between the current and the voltage is an angle of 90 degrees. The voltage is 90 degrees ahead of the current, which makes sense. As soon as the current begins to flow, the inductance opposes the current. You have maximum voltage across the inductor immediately. That's 90 degrees before the current gets to its full value as the current begins to build up. So yes, the 90 degree phase difference is indeed there. And so that would be the way to solve an RL circuit using those particular inputs. And that's how it's done.